In anthropology, a tribe is a human social group. Exact definitions of what constitutes a tribe vary among anthropologists. The concept is often contrasted with other social groups' concepts, such as nations, states, and forms of kinship. In some places, such as India and North America, tribes are polities that have been granted legal recognition and limited autonomy by the national or federal government. Topic. Etymology The word tribe first occurs in English in 12th century Middle English literature, in reference to the twelve tribes of Israel. The Middle English word is derived from Old French tribu and, in turn, from Latin tribus, plural tribus, in reference to a supposed tripartite division of the original Roman state along ethnic lines, into tribus known as the Ramnes or Ramnenses, Tites or Titianses, and Luceras, corresponding, according to Marcus Terentius Varro, to the Latins, Sabines and Etruscans respectively. The Ramnes were named after Romulus, leader of the Latins, Tites after Titus Tatius, leader of the Sabines, and Luceras after Lucumo, leader of an Etruscan army that had assisted the Latins. In 242-240 BC, the tribal assembly Comitia Tributa in the Roman Republic included 35 tribes for urban tribes and 31 rural tribes. According to Livy, the three tribes were squadrons of cavalry, rather than ethnic divisions. The term's ultimate etymology is uncertain, perhaps from the Proto-Indo-European roots tri, three, and bhew, to be. The classicist Gregory Nagy says, citing the linguist Emile Benvenisti, that the Umbrian trifu equivalent of the Latin tribus is apparently derived from a combination of asterisk tri and asterisk bhu, where the second element is cognate with the Greek root pho phio to bring forth and the Greek fool phile, clan, race, people, plural phylai phylai, the Greek polis, state, or city was, like the Roman state, often divided into phylae. In Europe during the late medieval era, the Bible was written mostly in New Latin and instead of tribus the word phyle was used, derived from the Greek fool. In the historical sense, tribe, race, and clan have often been used interchangeably. Topic. Usage controversy The term and concept of a tribe is controversial among anthropologists and other academics active in the social sciences. The term tribe was in common use in the field of anthropology until the late 1950s and 1960s, during which time scholars began to reassess its utility. In 1970, anthropologist J. Clyde Mitchell writes, The tribe, a long-respected category of analysis in anthropology, has recently been the object of some scrutiny by anthropologists. Doubts about the utility of the tribe as an analytical category have almost certainly arisen out of the rapid involvement of peoples, even in the remotest parts of the globe, in political, economic and sometimes direct social relationship with industrial nations. The doubts, however, are based ultimately on the definition and meaning which different scholars give to the term tribe, its adjective tribal, and its abstract form tribalism. Writing in 2013, scholar Matthew Ordolyova notes that, like the word Indian, tribe is a word that has connotations of colonialism. Survival International says it is important to make the distinction between tribal and indigenous because tribal peoples have a special status acknowledged in international law as well as problems in addition to those faced by the wider category of indigenous peoples. Topic: <laughs> Tribes and Nations. 
Considerable debate has accompanied efforts to define and characterize tribes. When scholars use the term, they may perceive differences between pre-state tribes and contemporary tribes. There is also general controversy over cultural evolution and colonialism. In the popular imagination, tribes reflect a way of life that predates, and is more natural than that in modern states. Tribes can also refer to primordial social groups that are clearly bounded, homogeneous, parochial, and stable. Tribes are an organization among families including clans and lineages, which generates a social and ideological basis for solidarity that is in some way more limited than that of an ethnic group or of a nation. Anthropological and ethnohistorical research has challenged all of these notions. Anthropologist Elman Service presented a system of classification for societies in all human cultures, based on the evolution of social inequality and the role of the state. This system of classification contains four categories. Hunter-gatherer bands that are generally egalitarian. Tribal societies with some limited instances of social rank and prestige. Stratified tribal societies led by chieftains see chiefdom. Civilizations, with complex social hierarchies and organized, institutional government. In his 1975 study, The Notion of the Tribe, anthropologist Morton H. Fried provided numerous examples of tribes that encompassed members who spoke different languages and practiced different rituals, or who shared languages and rituals with members of other tribes. Similarly, he provided examples of tribes in which people followed different political leaders, or followed the same leaders as members of other tribes. He concluded that tribes in general are characterized by fluid boundaries and heterogeneity, are not parochial, and are dynamic. Fried proposed that most contemporary tribes do not have their origin in pre-state tribes, but rather in pre-state bands. Such secondary tribes, he suggested, developed as modern products of state expansion. Bands comprise small, mobile, and fluid social formations with weak leadership. They do not generate surpluses, pay no taxes, and support no standing army. Fried argued that secondary tribes develop in one of two ways. First, states could set them up as means to extend administrative and economic influence in their hinterland, where direct political control costs too much. States would encourage or require people on their frontiers to form more clearly bounded and centralized polities, because such polities could begin producing surpluses and taxes, and would have a leadership responsive to the needs of neighboring states, the so-called scheduled Tribes of the United States or of British India provide good examples of this. Second, bands could form secondary tribes as a means to defend against state expansion. Members of bands would form more clearly bounded and centralized polities, because such polities could begin producing surpluses that could support a standing army that could fight against states, and they would have a leadership that could coordinate economic production and military activities. Archaeologists continue to explore the development of pre-state tribes. Current research suggests that tribal structures constituted one type of adaptation to situations providing plentiful yet unpredictable resources. Such structures proved flexible enough to coordinate production and distribution of food in times of scarcity, without limiting or constraining people during times of surplus. Topic. See also. equals equals notes